what's going on everybody we are bringing you front nine coverage of the hoosier partner doubles tournament being held at bc3 in nashville indiana i am blake miles and i'm joined by justin brosmer how's it going guys we've got an awesome card to watch today uh this tournament's being put on by the bloomington disc golf club and thank you to skyheiser productions for filming We've got the Fireballers versus some lucky dudes. We've got a team of Matt Kerman, Kern and Zach Kemmer versus Justin Brosmer and Kyle Sturworth. Both got sidearms and backhands. This is going to be a really fun card to watch. Hole one is a par three, 332 downhill. You can't go too far left or you'll be in the woods. This is a tough hole. Yeah, this green, as you can see, really drops off steep to the left. So there's going to be some death putts, I have a feeling, on this first hole. Looks like you're going for a backhand, maybe a soft turnover. Looks a little bit soft out of the hand, fading out left a little bit. Going to have a putt, but a little longer than you'd want it, I think, off the tee. Kyle's going with his force on a sidearm here. He usually puts this pretty close, so I'm hoping he can give us a better look. You'll notice that Kyle is very sidearm dominant. He's got a really strong forehand. Maybe a little bit of nerves for you guys on the first tee, but that's understandable um, going up against a team as strong as uh, Kern and Kemmer here. Oh, absolutely. So Kemmer from Indianapolis, he's another sidearm dominant player, and he's really, really consistent with these types of shots. Doesn't like it out of his hands. Going to fade out a little early. Definitely first hole jitters for everybody, it seemed like. Being filmed, it's a little different animal. Yeah, I know it was hot and sticky out there, and it looks like you guys are getting a little bit of a breeze off the first tee. Kern's going putter off the tee, which is not a bad move. If you get enough height on it and let it glide all the way down there. Wow. And he puts it 20 feet away. What a smooth delivery. He, he really has a lot of touch and power on that backhand shot. He does. He's so smooth and consistent, and he just stripe it anywhere he wants it. So it looks like you guys are kind of staring down a 50, 60 foot death putt here. This looks like a good bid. Oh, just off the center band. Really good effort from you there. I wanted to run it and hope it at least hit metal to stay close so that Kyle can give it all. Yeah, let's see what Kyle does here. He's known for making big putts. And absolutely drains it. He just cashed it. He, he's so consistent on backing me up in doubles that I just had faith in him. So Absolutely. He he makes a frustrating amount of those putts. Camera here, basically a formality for him. A couple of great birdies to start the day for you guys. Great start. And moving on to hole two. As we can see, we are going straight into the woods. This one just shy of 250 feet. It looks like we are playing in the right position. Uh, so the sidearm does play, but as you can see, this green runs away fast. A lot of death putts on this one as well. That ravine goes down a good 150 feet, so you do not want to find yourself skipping down there. Looks like you are lining up that sidearm with maybe a firebird. That's right. Yep. Threw it into the ground here. Uh, just not my best effort. It's a really tough hole. And Kyle is going to go for that sidearm as well. He's probably, is he throwing one of his raptors here? He's I throwing think? a reaper here. He likes it for a little more touchy sidearms. It doesn't fade as hard. Oh, and that's looking good out of his hand. Oh, and he catches one of those last guardian trees, but that's really not that bad of a result. Should give you guys a an open putt, yeah, be it a scary one. Really downhill, but yeah, it's going to give us a look. Kimmer going sidearm here as well. Yeah, Zach Hammer is sponsored by Prodigy Disc. He's probably going with an A2, I think. I know he likes throwing those. Misses those. This could be good. But he's going to end up a little bit up that hill as well. Kind of a little bit behind where Kyle is. I have a feeling Kern is going to go with a, another silky backhand for us here. Yeah, he's going to throw a beautiful turn over here probably. A little low out of his hand, but this could get a good skip. And it, oh, it wanted to. You'll a lot of times see on this hole that backhand does kind of push right after it skips. It sort of gets that anti-skip with the hillside. But so they're going with Kern's shot here. Um, 45 foot downhill. And Kimmer just puts it just on the top of the band. Yeah, great bid there. And he, he does not get punished. He stays close. So they're going to have a par no matter what. That's going to give Kern the green light to absolutely run this basket. It's hard to tell from the camera footage, but that ravine is super steep, and it's if you airball, you're just you're going way down. So, wow, 
Just absolutely nice smashes turn. that putt. Never a doubt. It's going to put is, a little bit of pressure on you guys. Absolutely. That is not a putt you would ever run in singles, but in doubles you get the opportunity to, and he made it look great. Oh, it looks like you just didn't quite commit to that one. Understandable being at a really scary putt, but gives Kyle the green light. Kyle's going to go from a knee just to make sure he doesn't blow over the basket. Kyle puts with soft wizards, really touchy, just oh, just, just come short. up low. So they take a stroke on us here, uh, but we still have a one stroke lead overall. Yep, a lot of golf to play. Um, a lot of teams, even on the chase card, uh, it's pretty tight at the top. You guys uh, did get the nod to the lead card, um, but this is going to be a battle. There's a lot of holes. We are playing 20, is it 24 holes today? 20, 27, 27 holes. holes today. So. Um, we're going to have three nines worth of coverage for you guys to watch, and it, at this course, it's going to be a treat. Hole three, par three, 272, tight off the tee, a little turnover or a slight sidearm. you got to keep it low. The ceiling is really low here. does shape really well for the sidearm play if you've got it. And it looks like Cameron's missed a lot of the obstacles. That's going to be maybe... 35, 40 foot putt, but he should be pretty open. Yeah, not not a bad shot at all. He got really lucky and, and stayed near the green there. Yeah, hard to tell on camera how uphill this hole is. It really is an uphill and a low ceiling shot. Um, one of the sneaky hard birdies to get on this course. Kern's going to go through a mid-range turnover here. Low, straight. Just too, just too low. Doesn't get enough juice on it. Yeah, that's a really common miss on this hole with that uphill. Looks like you're going backhand with a, maybe a fairway driver. Yeah, I like to throw a nine-speed vandal here uh, just to get a little juice on it because of low ceiling and try to keep it at that 10 foot or less height. Oh, this looks good out of your hand if it misses that bush. Yes. Oh yeah, this is fantastic. Excellent shot, absolutely parked it. That's gonna give you guys a birdie all day. Kyle absolutely. might as well just blast it at the chains at this point. That's what he's trying to do. He's going with the Reaper again. Nice and high, giving it the angle. Got through clean, but we were already parked. Oh, camera coming up a little short. Looks like they might have a little bit of that bushy tree to contend with. Kern, oh. Kern with a great run, but they couldn't capitalize on the birdie opportunity, and we get another stroke back to keep it at two strokes for the tournament. And they're not the only team we have to worry about. There's two other teams on the chase card that were only that were tied with Kern and Kimmer or one stroke back from them. So we are nowhere near safe at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Got to get birdies on what feels like every hole. As we move into a really tough one here, hole four, this one goes through a gap off the tee, and as you can see, we're playing to this basket up on the left. So this is a big power backhand hyzer through a gap. Really tough to get pin high on this one. It takes an absolute crush. That looks to be one if it misses that stuff, and it does, and it gets knocked down a little early. You're going to see that happen a lot on this hole. This one's also playing up that same hill that we saw on hole three, um, but obviously a lot more distance to contend with. So Kyle might go for this flexi sidearm play. He's throwing a Zeus here, and he likes to throw a big turnover on it to get it come back. He just rolled it over too much there, but he did park this hole first round, and we got one of the only birdies of the day on that hole. Yeah, so you guys will probably have 50 feet or so. Kemmer also going for the sidearm. He's going with something with a wide rim. Looks like a D2 just gets caught up there. Well, made it out at least. Yeah, again, really common for uh, this to hit those small trees coming out of this gap. Very, very tight gap to have to hit with a full power shot. Kern, I have a feeling he's going to blast one right through it, though. Little inside. Man, he almost hit it, but he does catch those short trees. So nobody really that close here. You guys have a putt. Kern and Kemmer are going to be maybe 100, 120 feet out, or even further. Yeah, they're probably 180 out, so they are got to get a good upshot, put it close for an easy three. Yeah, definitely worth mentioning, this was a hot day, and, you know, 
just keeping the grip on your fingers was really difficult out there with how sweaty every, everybody was getting. Um, and as you can see, there is just no relief from the sun out here. Absolutely. It was 90 plus degrees today and the, and the whale sacks were coming in handy. So you guys are lining up what looks like maybe an 80, 90 footer. This is a good bid. Oh, wow. Just deep. Really good effort there. Let's see if Kyle can answer. No fear of going too far past on this basket. Just flat green. No roll away chance really. Just giving it everything you got. Looks good. No, just a little short. So you guys are going to move on with your threes. That's a pretty common result on that hole. A little bit of a bonus birdie. Um, but hole five coming up is one that I know you guys are going to want to get, especially with the scores being, being close as they are. Absolutely. Hole five, par three, 283, slide downhill, open tee shot, but you gotta maneuver around a few guardian trees around the green. Common mistake is hitting early and ending up deep left in the creek. You just wanna get past those guardians and get around circle's edge for a putt. That's a common, that's a common way to get a birdie here. Yeah, this is one that you really wanna get, but it does have a lot of stuff that's guarding the basket. A lot of guardian trees, especially in the summer when those leaves are filled out, it does seem to tighten that gap quite a bit. I put my Explorer around Circle's Edge there, so we'll take that, but looking for Kyle to get a lot closer here. This is looking pretty good. All right, so he, he looks like he gets into the circle there, maybe a 25, 28 footer. Kimmer here going with the sidearm again. If he misses that, this could be good. Yep. And he gets through clean. Oh, yeah. Wow. And he puts it to 10 feet. Great shot by Kimmer. Let's see if Kern can maybe give this a bid. A little high left, but it's pushing through. Oh, and he puts it even closer. What a shot. Kern throws an AVR, it seems, whenever he can. And he is so good with that disc. He puts it wherever he wants. Absolutely. He's just got such a slow, deliberate form, and it comes out with a just very clean spin. He gets a lot of distance because of it. So Kyle actually a lot closer than I had thought. Oh, no, and just pushing out a little bit left side. Let's just not talk about that one. <laughs> I have a feeling Kyle's going to have your back on this putt. I can always count on my partner. Yeah, there you go. So this is going to be good birdies for both of the teams here. Can't give enough shout outs to BC3 Disc Golf. If you haven't gone played this course yet and you're in Indiana, you got to make it out there. Awesome private facility on a former golf course, but you can't really tell anymore. It is just an amazing place to go play disc golf. So definitely highly recommend checking it out. Absolutely. Lots of elevation change. Great mix of open and wooded shots. Absolutely. And this hole right here has got a little bit of woods and some open uh, aspect to it. This is hole six. We're going through this gap and then straight up a pretty steep hill. And the basket is just tucked right between these three big trees. Uh, this, it's twoable, but it often does play as a two shot hole. You really want to get something out into the open and just get an easy three maybe have a long outside look for two um, that's going to be a good shot for you guys pretty much a guaranteed three from there uh, you know kyle's going to want to pump something a little closer to the pin though yep i just threw my vandal out there just to get it straight through the gap and get out there in the open kyle's throwing his flippy zeus here to try to get some distance on a little turnover and get it back to the basket after making the gap and he absolutely pipes it oh yeah great rip this is one of the hardest threes on the course absolutely is the hardest three on the course part yes. three so getting a two is rare kyle put us for a look there yeah, that was an awesome shot camera looking to follow that comes out a little inside he's going to be caught up on the tree line um still threeable from there but i want to say kern's going to put something out in the open here kern's throwing a road runner here he told me first round that he almost oh. parked this and he just put a little too much on i think their early release so they're going to go with Kimmer's shot here and they got a tough up shot to get up to the basket. Still 250 feet, probably. Nice. Oh, no yeah. problem. That was a smooth up shot there from Kemmer. He's so good at those low pushing sidearm shots. And I couldn't have said it better myself. This is a tight line. He's got to weave his way through some of these huge trees right in front of him. And he 
He's done that. How close can he get to the pin? <laughs> and that's also Good. excellent. No problem. So they're definitely taking a three. Let's see if you guys can capitalize on this huge drive from Kyle. We're only 35 away-ish, and I just left it short. Wind's picking up a little bit. Kyle's pretty good from this range. Oh, man, that was a good effort. Just pushed out a little right. Looks like you guys are going to push again on this hole. Three doesn't hurt you. There might be a couple of twos on the day, but really this is a huge bonus. Honestly plays like a par four for a lot of the people playing the blues. For sure. Hole seven, par three, 244. Another tight line off the tee. You have an option to go left or right of that big tree in the middle of the fairway. Just get out in the open, get somewhere around the base of this hill, and you've got to look for birdie. Yeah, backhand skip is definitely a common play on this one. It's a very low ceiling and uphill. I went Glimmer Explorer here for the stability and put it to 20 feet. So Kyle going with a rare backhand. You know if Kyle's throwing a backhand, this is probably a backhand hole. He gets a pretty clean release on it. Looks like he gets caught up a little bit in the gap, but you guys should have a pretty routine three. Camera's going to go forehand roller here. Uh, that's another common play. It, it does work out well for the forehand roller if you can just hit it right. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this works out because this absolutely could shape up for a great forehand roller. And this one looks pretty good. Oh, it just gets caught up on maybe a root. So much stuff to miss coming through this gap. It really is very tight right where you need to, to get out into the open. Current going fairway driver here. Probably Firebird for stability. Oh, yeah. Gets it clean, gets up there for a putt. Yeah, that, that's a lot closer to the shot you're looking for. They're still going to be 25 feet or so with a little bit uphill, but um, I have a feeling these guys are going to knock it down. Let's see. Oh, camera just a little left. Gave it the height. Kern lining up the putt here, elevated basket. Just comes up a little low. You know they got to be kicking themselves on that one. That was a pretty open birdie look in doubles. You want to snatch those up. Um, but with the wind picking up, none of these are easy, and, and it's a tight battle. Looks like you're lining up one of your maidens here. Oh, again, just a little bit right. I've got faith in Kyle. 25 footers, he eats those for breakfast. That's absolutely right. No problem. Great we putt. take another stroke on Kern and Kemmer here. Going into hole eight, which is a par four that felt really good to get. A somewhat easy par three. It's the whole average probably 2.3, 2.4 today. So it felt yeah. good to get a stroke on them. Yeah, love to see that. Also love these wood uh, pedestals that BC3 built for their elevated baskets. I think it gives it a lot of character. Absolutely. So here's hole eight. This is a par four. You have to hook around this corner initially. Right out here where the drone is flying is about where you want to land on your tee shot. And then you immediately have to go straight down into the woods. This is a short par four, but it could not be more technical. This upshot is really, really tough to get the height and the speed and the angle correct. The placement of the tee shot is so important because the gap back into the woods is really thin. There is a play to go for the eagle through the woods on the right. It's really, really rare. But I'm going up here to look at my tee shot right now to see if I have an angle into the woods so Kyle can make the decision to go for it or not. We did round one. He did make it clean through to go for the eagle look, and we just missed the eagle. Mm. But we weren't in position, so he needed to just throw a normal tee shot here. Yeah, I've taken a look at that line through the woods, and it is, yeah, it's pretty nuts to get through, get all the way through there. But I have seen it done. Um, but you definitely want to have one safe in the fairway before you go for that shot. So I think you guys played it smart there. Looks like Kern or Kemmer actually. This is going to be a sidearm overstable, and he cuts through the corner, and they're actually going to be in a great spot from that. That was incredibly lucky. Usually, when you hit that tree, you drop right down in front of the red tee pad, and you have a zero look. To get down there for birdie. He cut through and they have a great look for birdie now. Yeah, very fortunate. So looks like Kern might be thinking about going for the aggressive woods play. 
He is, and he's going to. I can't wait to see how this goes. This line is so tiny, I've never even thought about trying it. You and me both, pal. This, uh, this, it's almost a suicide gap. There's also OB down there in the woods, so if you don't cut all the way through, you're almost certainly OB. Absolutely. And it sounds like that one does come up OB. Luckily, Kemmer's put himself in a great spot, so they're going to have a chance to get up and down for the three. Looks like you've got a sneaky gap to go through here. This is not the typical gap. I was trying to go on the right side of that big tree uh, and just completely sawed it off. The OB definitely had me nervous. Yeah. It is right there on the right. Understandable. And hard to tell on camera, but this is a very downhill shot. Uh, once it kind of goes into the woods, the basket is, is way down the hill. Probably, I would say probably like a 30-foot elevation drop. Kyle and I talking about the shot here. He lines it up perfect. Oh, wow. And puts it at the pin. Awesome shot. One of the best backhands I've ever seen him throw, ever. Yeah, that's that's a really scary shot to have to commit to going through the woods. And he executes it great. This is a good-looking shot from the camera. But, oh, he catches that one tree right in the middle. It's a really tight turnover to hit that gap. And you really want a quick turn and then it to flatten out and land straight. Right, and this is just demonstrating just how important that tee shot is. You can see they they got way down there, and they're still in a very tricky position. If they could have been maybe 20 feet farther, they'd have a wide open, easy look, quote unquote easy look. But right. they were pretty pinched, so they're going to have this long downhill putt. Kimmer for, from 50 feet for birdie, just it's just so tough. Yeah, got to respect that effort. Gave it the height. Um, you know, they're they're probably coming 60 feet down this hill. So Kern knows now they're down by another stroke on this round, and he really needs to make this. Good effort. They're going to take a par. We're going to take a tap in birdie to go up four strokes for the tournament. Yeah, and that's that's really something special. If you can have a tap in birdie on this hole, you love to see it. This is a really short par four, but it somehow still feels like a bonus. That upshot and the positioning off the tee being just so tricky. So, really impressive three from you guys. Kemmer and Kern going to take a nice four. Um, you guys are going to be moving on to hole nine. Hole nine, par three, 386, over the pond. Open tee shot, but you got to get sneaky through this gap. There's really not a fairway here. you got to kind of get lucky and get a little tree love to get down there for a two look. Yeah. Got to be one of the signature holes, and you are low, but, oh, this looks to be absolutely laced. Are you kidding me? Did did that go OB into the road? OB over the road. Oh, my I could goodness. Not, I could not see. Once it gets to the woods, you just can't see where it goes. Wow. Catch I, cam guys said it almost aced. It was chain high right and just blasted past the basket and went OB. So wow. Kyle's got to make something happen here to give us a look. Wow. Unfortunate for you to go OB, but an awesome shot nonetheless. Just ripping it right at the pin. So Kyle's going to be caught up in the stuff on the left. You might have a little bit of a look from there, but it's not a close one, and it's downhill. If you're outside the woods, it is almost impossible to get it to. It's just so guarded. Yeah, looks like Kern going through the back end. Gets it over just a little bit. Might have a little fight. But yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit right there. Um, Kern going to try to crash, or Kemmer rather, going to try to crash in with a sidearm. And he saws this one off a little bit. The right side is the common miss. Yeah. Forehand is definitely the better play here to come in wide left around. But sawing it off is, is a common miss on the right side. Yeah, and this is another very uh, tricky green, very guarded. You guys got a long look through the trees. Oh, my God. Wow, and almost oh, ringing it up. So that is a fantastic effort. Not easy to get a We're get looking a at over, over 60 feet downhill, guardian trees everywhere, just trying to make something happen. Kyle, that's a respectable bid from there as well. You guys are looking at a tap in three. And we're fine with that. They, they don't have a lot either. Tough uphill from 40 plus feet. Guardian trees everywhere. Kimmer hits one right in front of him. This hole's really tough. If you're not within the circle, you're likely not getting a two. So it looks like both teams are going to card their tap in threes. As you said, nothing wrong with that. That's a tough hole. 
Um, and you are actually about to get into the more scorable section of the course. The next, the next few holes on the on the middle nine are going to be. I have a feeling we're going to see some birdies. But right. we got the Fireballers on three down for the round. You guys at five down. It's a battle. It's a beautiful day. We're lucky to be watching some disc golf at BC3. Join us again for the middle nine. 